Now, Home Secretary Suella Braverman could face a legal challenge over her plan to house migrants on a barge at Portland Port. The Bibby Stockholm vessel would accommodate more than 500 migrants uh, at the cost of taxpayers more than 20,000 a day. This is the idea of getting them out of hotels where it's costing £150 a day. That's about six million, isn't it, or something? Oh, well, that's seven million. It's too much. Yes, yes, yes. All right, right. Now let's talk now to the local Dorset Conservative MP Richard Drax for his view on the matter. Good morning, Richard. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Okay, so morning. we have to do something with these migrants. Why doesn't the barge work for you? Well, there's two areas of concern that we have. Uh, one is in the port itself, which is a highly, highly restricted area you're going to have 500, we don't know who they are, if it's young men, in, in effect, a sort of quasi-prison because they're only going to be allowed out on a bus. We don't know where the bus will go to. We don't know where they're going to be dropped. We don't know whether someone will monitor them. We don't even know if they'll get back to the pickup point and get back to where they are incarcerated. Plus, of course, we have a very, very sensitive seaside town which relies so hugely on visitors and tourists for the summer trade and uh, we are concerned this could have a detrimental effect. Richard, currently these people are in hotels and those, those issues you raise would be issues where they are currently and everyone agrees they shouldn't be in hotels, it's too expensive, they've got to move somewhere. Isn't the barge at least, and I understand in Holland they used this barge for migrants before successfully, a better way of, of, of keeping these people securely? Well, securely they won't be kept because of course they will... But they're not in prison. hotels though, are they? Sorry, I missed that. Well, they're not in hotels. They're not insecure in hotels either. They're not locked in their room in hotels. No, they're not. Um, and yes, there is a big issue here. But um, this, this port, as I've explained, uh, with its highly restricted area, is going to have a trouble enough to look after these uh, migrants. And as I said, outside, there'll be no control over where they go, what they do in a very sensitive seaside town. There are other ports, other places, and you may accuse me of being a NIMBY, but this is particularly this is this is particularly this port is not an appropriate place, and I'm not just the only one saying this. We haven't been even been consulted uh, by anyone or hardly anyone on the consequences of this uh, of this influx, and that in itself surprises me. Richard, all we're hearing is not here, not right for here, you can't do this, it's wrong, etc, etc. So I'm sorry, it is a bit of nimbyism going on here. Um, so where do they go? What do we do with them? Well, the solution is simple, although of course it hasn't been done. Uh, proper reception centres have to be built and they haven't been. And I would urge the government to get on with it as fast as they can. Where uh, uh, Asylum seekers can be located securely, looked after properly, and their case is validated or not. To distribute them around ships and barges all around the country in the short term, I understand there is a, a solution. It is not the medium to long term solution for all the reasons we know. And there have been issues in hotels already, people disappearing, sexual assaults, violence and all the rest of it. My concern is that on a barge, these issues will be magnified. So, Richard, you're saying you wouldn't have a problem with a proper processing centre being built in your constituency? Well, I, I'm not saying it should be built in my constituency. I don't know where it would be, but certainly a, cons a consultation by the government on where best to put reception centres should take place. Now, clearly, they're going to have to go somewhere, and wherever they go, they're going to get, I suspect, um, people are going to get upset. But this one that they've chosen, as I say, is unsuitable for the reasons I've given. And there's been absolutely no consultation on the effect this could have. Quite apart from the support, the migrants on board are inevitably going to need. Can I ask you, Richard, do you know why they chose this port in your constituency? I guess because it's a private one. Because uh, it bypasses planning consent. And the fact that uh, all the negotiations have been in private so far between the port and the Home Office uh, negates the need to talk to Dorset Council, uh, the health, the police. Uh, me would be nice to know what's going on rather than being told by people like you what is happening. Um, that would, I thought, be the, the more courteous way and the more sensible way forward, but that's not how it's been done.
And the £3,000 we understand the government would pay per refugee to sweeten the pill, is that going to go to the private port or does that go to the local council? We don't know. Oh. Good question. Uh, uh, is, it going to pay, is, is, it, is it going to pay for the health care? Is it going to pay for the policing? Is it going to pay for the dentists and the doctors? Is it going to pay for what? Who's going to get it? I mean, Dorset Council have had minimal conversation. I've just spoken to them this morning about an hour ago. Uh, they were told, like I was a few days ago now, that this was coming. But since then, we've had no explanation as to who's coming. We think a barge is coming. We don't know who's going to be on the barge. Uh, and then when they are here, who in effect is going to be responsible for them outside the port? And as I say, I, I fear there'll be issues on board the barge in the port. All right, that's Richard Drax. He's the Conservative MP for South Dorset. They appear to be making a bit of a pig's ear of this, Dorset.